Hi, I'm going to have a little look at this uh, Xenon Sharp Arc Lamp, which I got recently, but unfortunately it's had a little accident. Um, Xenon Sharp Arc Lamps are in high intensity discharge lights, um, but this one has been plugged in the wrong way around. Although it was brand new, the, um, the polarity was reversed and it's resulted in damage to the cathode of the lamp. So the, the damage has actually caused the, the lamp not to be able to strike or run at its normal voltages. Um, so what we're going to do is try and push the voltage up a little bit to see if we can get it to do anything. I've had to disconnect this wire from its original connection which was here. The reason being is that it's designed to strike it to 20,000 volts but at 20, over 20,000 volts it is arcing internally because of this mirroring uh, is metal and it's being able to jump to that rather than break the gas down. So separating this wire away now gives me a better chance of applying 30 kV or above to it. Uh, so at least a chance of getting it to strike. Uh, it won't uh, continue the arc it, on its design 14 volts, so we'll have to try and increase the voltage and see if that can sustain it. Um, there's one big problem with these lights is that the xenon pressure in here is possibly about probably about 10 times atmospheric at least, and therefore these don't implode, they explode if anything goes wrong. Um, unlike this type of light being a mercury halide, which is a mixture of mercury and halogens for projectors. This one is just pure xenon at very very high pressure. This is one of the smaller size of xenon lamps. You get much larger ones. I have another one here which I'm not going to take out of the box for the same reason as the pressures are so high. This is a ballistic jacket this lamp has uh, with a much larger arc uh, tube inside here. This one's a 3 kilowatt, I think. Yep, 2 kilowatts this one. Okay, I've wired uh, the lamp up to a very makeshift circuit. Um, the, this is a, a smooth circuit which I can take up to about 60 or 70 volts uh, uh, rectified here and smoothed. This transformer is a, is a pulse transformer which I can fire to try and trigger the light. I have a high voltage supply here, spark gap and this transform. So I'll try and see if the igniter part works first. I'll also put a piece of black perspex over this as a safety precaution. And then try and fire the trigger circuit. I'm able to see the light flashes occasionally there, so I probably could do a slightly higher voltage, but it's a start. Okay, I've brought the uh, voltage up to sit around about 20 volts, and that's a little bit above its normal operating voltage. Uh, I also meant to say there's a breaker in here in case, uh, just to protect the transformer. Uh, we'll try firing it at that voltage, but I don't imagine it will trigger. No, it doesn't manage to do anything like that. So let's take the voltage up a bit more. It's 30 volts on here now. Not leave the meter connected to it during firing. Still no luck. Okay, I've taken it up to 60 volts, which is about as high as I want to go at the moment. Except there's a brighter flash there. You can see it's trying, but it can't stay, and that's at 63 volts, which is the rating of that capacitor, and we'll need to have a capacitor to um, take it any higher than that. I don't know if you quite see how bright that is, it certainly hurts my eyes. Okay, just as a, an overview of that circuit we were using, it's basically a, a variac here and a transformer which is actually a 240 to 110 on this winding. I've put a 6 amp breaker in just for safety 
bridge and the smoothing cap there. Uh, this diode here is to protect the bridge against reverse pulses from this uh, this uh, igniter. This is like a superimposed igniter uh, using this transformer to produce that, the high voltage across this arc to establish the initial startup in theory. We have 100 volts. And it's on. I've got a meter on here of yes, to measure the current because what I want to check here is that the, the wattage is tried to be, be maintained. Got 123 volts on the arc. I need to see if we can start that up. And ignite the lamp, and it's straight on, but we've got 10 amps at that, so I'm going to take it down. Okay, the instability appears very quickly. Where it, oh, right, that's only 20 odd volts, so it's not too bad. It's a wee bit unstable, but oh, there we go. Out. Okay. Okay. Unfortunately, I was trying to run this light a second time, just to, or a third time, really, to try and get the spectrum from it, but it's no longer firing up. And if I look closely, there's a secondary fault occurred. This, this little connection here has now melted, and there's an arc appearing here, so it will fire fire with the trigger, but not um, maintain the arc because this is now open circuit. Not quite sure what's happened here. I don't think it was over a current, so I think we must have been must have overheated during one of the runs, and this strip has melted. So the lamp is now really open circuit, completely. Well, unfortunate, but it we did expect it to get worse rather than better.